I'm super excited to be here today and welcome to our today's podcast and uh, the recording that I'm doing with an amazing human being. As you know, our channel is called Reset Being Human. As human being, I always say we need to start being human first. That's the most important thing. I met this amazing person, you know, that in it just by crossing path, uh, you know, when my daughter was studying in this university, one of the five prestigious universities in Malaysia called University of Science Malaysia. and i met this amazing uh, vice chancellor you know i'll be introducing him i have to do justice there's a profile i'm going to read and uh, you know i'm going to do justice i'm going to take time so you guys are going to be with me for a while because i want to make sure the person that i'm going to interview in a while worth every moment and must be justified in the best way possible so here i go professor dato dr faizal rafiq mohammad adi khan served as university science malaysia usm eighth vice chancellor now this is vice chancellor i'm talking to her uh, that's the most important thing and i'm super proud to be here today from 2019 to 2022 prior to usm he served the university of malaya for 22 years his last position being the deputy vt for vc for development from 2013 to 2019 in recognition of this prof rafiq was conferred pinangs Darja Yang Mulia Pangkuan Negeri in 2021 carrying the title Dato so he said Dato right Prof Rafiq earned his PhD in integrated optical device from the Opto Electronic Research Center University of Southampton in 2007 his PhD was sponsored by the Malaysian government and he also received the SPIE educational award in optical science and engineering in 2004 his work on flat fibers produced an international patent it's a patent so he's amazing you know he's coming up with creative ideas and received the section prize for the best engineering research during presentation at the listen house of common right this is the british parliament where rishi sunak is now i guess in 2006 In 2009 his work won the best of the best there's an award for best of the best so this is the top the cream of the cream right during UN's research invention and innovation expo in 2013 prof rafiq was promoted as a professor he received the malaysia torre science foundation science and technology award in 2017 for his contribution to photonics mainly in introducing optical fiber fabrication to malaysian researchers and students when it was commissioned in 2010 as part of um's high impact grant worth rm 6.2 million the first fiber laboratory was the only research purpose fiber drawing tower in south east asia prof rafiq became a fellow of the academic science of malaysia in 2020 and received his chartered engineer from the institution of engineering and technology iet in the same year he received the best lecturer award during um's excellence award in 2009 some more best in teaching in 2011 best dean 2012 2013 and best in commercialization in 2016 also um's sports icon In 2015, he plays also not only about brain only. This is brain, brawn, everything here. Okay, um, Prof. Rafiq co-founded Flexlicate. We will be talking about this, uh, Sandran Berhad, in 2015. In the same year, Flexlicate became the best Asian university startup. It's uh, in the uh, Rice Bowl Startup Awards. The award recognizes innovation, excellence, and best practices in startup ecosystem across Southeast Asia. Flexlicate designs, fabricate, and markets bespoke optical fibers and structures, micro capillaries, and micro bores. These find use in the next generation optical network, life science, and chemical instrumentation, and semiconductor. Flexlicate's client listen includes NASA and ASA. Okay, Johns Hopkins University, Fujikura Limited, TDK Electronics, and Shiral Photonic. In June 2016, Flexlicate and her collaborators, the University of Southampton and University of Ottawa, but collaborators and their universities, right, won the Dengue Tech Challenge grant amounting to 
million ringgit under the Newton Unku Omar Fund. The research and development were aimed at producing a rapid point of care dengue sensor that can potentially be utilized in rural and remote areas. That's a noble thing to look at, especially in the rural area. Prof Rafik is an alumnus of MRSM, a chain of top boarding schools and have been involved in motivational speeches and career guidance initiatives since 1993. For this, he was awarded the MRSM Typing Icon 2021-2022. I'm super excited to have Professor Rafik here. Welcome, Prof. Super excited to be in your presence, you know, in the vibes, you know. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm just in awe after reading this. There's a CV that was sent to me also. I said, <laughs> I told Kavita, if I'm going to read the CV, one hour, that's it. That's the podcast and say, nice meeting you. Because yeah. everything was there. So, I'm super excited. Today, I, I want to pick on you sure. and, you know, get as much because I, I love mis- meeting with us. People who are, you know, movers and shakers in their own way. Very unique. And take something uh, as a student because I'm here as a student to learn from an amazing person. So I want to ask you, Prof, um, uh, with, with all these things that's coming, I was reading about you and, and you were sitting there. It's all about you. Uh, how was you feeling when I was reading about this? Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, foremost, thank you for having me here today. And it's the, the, feature, the feeling is mutual. Yeah. Um, I think we crossed path uh, a few months ago and uh, I was uh, extremely inspired by your daughter Kavita and of course, of course what you do. We eventually learn about what you do. Um, so, your first question when you read that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just here feeling that I'm, I'm still, a, you know, someone extremely small. Those, uh, those achievements would not have happened uh, if it's not for the help of so many people. Mm. So, you know, um, there's, a, there's a saying in English that says, gild the lily, in the sense that when you you ask to share your success. You don't tend to to tell the, the amount of work and also the the setbacks or the failures that you face as well. Mm. Uh, and if anything, that is uh, and those things that you've read is an, an acknowledgement of the uh, the hard work of lots of uh, people. Um, and I still feel that I can do more. Wow. <laughs> so I still feel that you know there's still things to be done. And uh, like yourself, I'm still learning as well. Amazing. With you. Yeah. Thanks, Prof. You know that, that that's something I really like because how. Grounded you are Thank with you. so many things that's happening. I've seen people who are so inflated, right? And uh, here I get the vibes because what we do for the past 14 years, we talk about vibes and all that because we can connect. So for you to be all this, because it obviously came from a lot of elements in your life. Yeah. So who was your role model well, um, in your life? So as you said uh, just now, you know, we, we follow stages in mm-hmm. our lives. And we can see that our rules uh, change as we as we mature. So um, it's it's not an easy question to answer in the sense that you have so many role models. Absolutely. And in my book, role models can be people who teach you positive things, but in a way, role models can be also those people who teach you how not to do things. You know, whether it's uh, in your pref- professional life or whether it's in your uh, personal life. And and role models doesn't have to be human as well. You know, I read lots of books and, you know, you, I think a lot of, there are a lot of narratives that inspire. We don't have to know that people, that person, but we, we follow the narrative and we say, ah, you know what, that relates, uh, to me as well. So uh, my division of role model is quite, quite large in that sense. Yeah. Of course, there's family members that play a part. There are people that we know, um, along the way, you also suffer some setbacks, you know, I, uh, so those are all, you know, all combined role models, you know, right. family, friends, acquaintance, enemies, perhaps, uh, or, or even the public and all those things. And of course, um, good books. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Um, um, I totally agree with you. It could be both positive or negative because some of the toughest people in our life are the best teachers. Precisely, yes. It yes, is not them. It's really teaching for us. Yes. It's making us to become That's right. whoever we are and move on of the values that we have taken. So in our book also, one of the things that I put in the acknowledgement is in, in the Hinduism, they say Mata, Pita, Guru, Devam. It's mother, father, guru, and then God. Yeah. Because I think gurus are people who will come in your life and nudge. You can't hold on to them. Yeah. They'll nudge you through a book, through a teaching or anything and, and make us to be whoever we are. 
I so, agree precisely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was so inspired with the article that you actually, uh, Kavita sent, and then uh, the second article I got from you, from Appa Kaba TV article. Yeah. Super excited, and uh, we are going to go into that. The con- some of the conversation will be based on that, on your journey in uh, USM. Sure. Uh, because at that time you were waiting uh, uh, on, on, you know, the next tenure for the VC is coming. Yeah. And the way you started was, you know, you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, yes. and then you went on. Then I got excited. This person is real. Okay, <laughs> yeah. he's he's raw. Then it kept me reading. So yeah. I read, and then then it, it started showing that so many things that you're doing, and 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 one of the things that caught my uh, attention is you are you you believe in servant leadership. You you basically uh, uh, include everyone. You didn't say I did it. I remember in uh, in the I'm from I'm a mechanical engineer by training. Uh, in, in the semiconductor factory working, there's this equipment guy, uh, the manager who always say, I did it, I did it. Mm. So during one of the forums where the senior guy came from uh, Phoenix, when he was presenting and he got caught, he looked at the team, how? I said, we don't know, you did it, right? <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. And he got caught, he got shelled. <laughs> yeah. So I see that you, you pull. So the, the question is, what drives you to do that? Why, why you bring people together? Inclusion is a very important thing and you always want to be like a servant leader rather than, you know, be that I'm the boss kind of thing. Thank you. Um, I think one is basically, you know, we, we have, it's, it's, it's based on your own vul- vulnerability. You know, you, you are vulnerable in the sense that you have to acknowledge the fact that you don't know everything. Absolutely. Right. So um, you are tasked to solve problems, but in order for you to see what are the actual problems, you need people who, who are actually experiencing that one. And second, as you say, you know, people are not numbers. You know. People have their own background, history, experience, um, and if, and so, you know, the more people you include, including students as well, you have we receive lots of good ideas from students. You know, their pain, and what makes you an effective person is when you address the actual pain. Ooh. You don't assume that you know things. You know, so you don't make the assumption. So, um, and uh, I I always tell this to. I mean, in, in USM as well, I did, I did say it very, you know, very clearly from day one that, you know, I, I'm given the, the, the biggest responsibility, but my job here is to make sure that everyone's life becomes meaningful to provide the platform. So if you have students, they have all this raw talent, this potential, it's the, the job of the university to realize that. Mm-hmm. And whose job is that? That's mine. Cool. Uh, if it's staff, then when you, when you talk about uh, well-being or happiness index, I, you know, I like us as an institution to go beyond lip service. There's a lot of lip service, you know. There's a lot of, okay, we are one, USM is one, or UM is one. But when you analyze that, are we really one? Or, or, or are we favoring some, some groups compared to the others? Mm. And um, it seems to work. Wow. That's the thing. Wow. Um, I, was, when I was given an administrative post as soon as I came back from my PhD in 2007. Mm. So to go from coming back from a PhD in 2007 to become a professor in 2013 and mm. become a deputy vice chancellor, mm. that's, that's six years of very steep learning. Yeah, yeah. So you tend to make lots of mistakes mm-hmm. and you tend to discover that um, the more you listen to people, the more you, you uh, acknowledge that they are playing a part, mm. the more people will give. Wow. Right? Um, and it's also very, uh, what do you call that? Um, it releases you from pressure as well because mm. you don't have to carry yourself yeah. thinking that, you know, you know, you, I did this or I did that. You don't have that pressure of acknowledging yourself. As long as things work, you know, no matter who gets the credit. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and I, I, I seldom think that I need the credit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the credit comes from, you know, it shouldn't be forced. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, as long as people um, wish you well and praise that you, continue doing well then I think this wow. is rewarding enough amazing and then the best is to see your fruits of labor in terms of how people progress Absolutely. whether the students or staff whether wow. the academic staff or support staff and we you know along the along the you know in the, in the three years that I was in USM I was holding the US uh, running USM also in the six years I was deputy vice chancellor of development mm-hmm. um, those are the things that kept you going you know wow the fact that you know you see people progress, mm. people gaining confidence, and wow. people are enjoying their their work, wow. and coming up with ideas as well. Yes, and this is why we are. When I was in in UM, 
I forced the university to introduce, uh, no, there's an annual EM Excellence Award. Mm -hmm. And I forced them to, why don't you introduce the most innovative outfit in UM Award? And my outfit won that for four years in a row. Wow. And that what came, is that? What outfit is that? This is, this is the, the development office. Okay. So development office, I'm the only academic there. Okay. Most of them are engineers yeah. and also support staff. Mm -hmm. So, so for an outfit that has to do with all the development, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our matters, not having an academic set for myself, mm -hmm. to win the most innovative award tells something about yeah, yeah. the outfit. When I took over that uh, development office, it was the dumping ground of uh, problematic staff. Wow. So within two years, we changed it, we turned them around to become one of the, 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 the outfit that people wants to join because wow. can, they can see the excitement. Wow. And this all has to do with how you, how you treat people. Wow. So, so what was the ingredient there? That one of the things that you really saw, this actually made the change. Was it that the engagement of the, the people? Engagement. Engagement you're, of no, you're, you're, you're saying being human. So I yeah. think that's it. That's, that's the key. That's being human. And, you know, so humans, you know, you don't carry this title. You, you are, when you ask your, your staff, how are they doing? It has to come, it has to be genuine. Mm. You know, it's just sincerely wants to know mm. Mm. how are they doing, right? Absolutely. So it's not doing it because you know, you're being political or whatnot. It's, you know, as you say, it's just pure human emotion. Amazing. Well. Yeah. That's so nice. I, I remember, Prof, uh, during COVID time, I actually ran an initiative, um, made a recording, and I said, this is the thing. I'm going to actually call my friends up because they all don't know where they are. Yeah. And I'm going to ask them this question, and they, how are you? Yeah. And I'm going to ask them. The moment when I ask, how are you? They say, I'm fine. Yeah. Then I paused for a while, I, then I, I went on to say, really, really, I want to know, mm. how are you? Yes. And then, Prof, things started coming. <laughs> yes. There was yes. one guy I was talking to, yeah. we were laughing and laughing because he <laughs> took part in a walkathon for yeah. 12 hours. Yeah. He almost died, he said. <laughs> and then he got up again, he walked yes. again, got yeah. up. And I was tearing. Yeah. And I think that part is missing because a lot of things are superficial, like what you said earlier. Um, you know, people are with their position, they come and they have their slogans and mottos. Yes, yes. And one this, one two. I don't know, since when got two. Yeah. And then all that things, basically, they are very much into the surface of the slogans and brands. That's right. Yeah. But they're not going, going into actually the doers who are actually the movers and shakers for the people. Yeah. I, I'm super excited. And I'm going to go into performance now. So now I know. Uh, okay, before I go into performance now, when, when someone is doing well, what, what do you normally do? Do you go to them directly and go and see them and say, hey, thank you very much. You're doing an amazing job. How do you engage with them? No, your so, method? Uh, so I tell everyone, whether, you know, when I go to schools, when I talk to kids, I tell people, if you want to, if you are sincere about correcting someone, you do it personally, right? Mm. That means you care. Mm. You don't do it online for mm. people to see because mm. that's you seeking attention. Yeah. Uh, on the flip side, if people, uh, um, you know, if people accomplish something, one, I make it known that, you know, what they accomplish is actually larger than what we see, mm. right? And especially the unsung heroes. Mm. And I actually celebrate that. So I, I tend to write to the campus. Mm. This was when I was in UN. And one of the things that we did was, you know, during convocation, you know, lots of, you know, people go, you go as parent, you see what you see, right? But the preparations take about a week before yeah. the cleaners, the, the people who do the networks and all those. And so in, in UM, what we did was we took a picture of everyone. And we say that's 10,000 guests, 2,000 students, blah, blah, blah. And these are the people who made that happen. And some of these cleaners, some of these cleaners have never had themselves photographed, let alone being put in a, in, in a, you know, in a, in a, in, in general view of these are the people you, you cross path every day. Wow. But they are the ones who actually made this possible, right? So when, when they actually read that email sent to the whole campus that says, you guys did well, wow. they actually share that with their uh, friends and family to say, you know what? For the first time, we, we are human. <laughs> you know, we're not a number, right? And that actually educate people as well. Wow. Look, don't take, don't take these people for granted. Yeah, I mean, they are cleaners. Yeah, they are probably people who actually arrange those flowers. But without them, you're not going to have a good convocation. Absolutely. So, so, so we celebrate success. And of course, there are people who, who, who would try to deconstruct any form of success, whether it's a large success or small. And I told people, look, you know, in, in, in life, 
there will be about 10 or 15% people who, who hate you for whatever reason. You just, you just have to accept that, right? Don't waste time trying to convince them who you are because they're not going to... But there's 85% who, 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 you know, who uh, welcome this sort of thing. So, we, so I tend to celebrate success. And one of the things that I do also is that when I write emails, I actually just say, put their name there. Wow. So Kavita or, you know, um, any of my staff. And, you know, put the full name. And they just get Absolutely. extremely, extremely uh, happy. And I never put, you know, I never actually credit myself. I say this to all of my staff. Wow. Um, same goes with football and all those things. So when I play football and we, we got second, I arranged for the VC to... To give up the, the, the they have to, you know, the, 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 to give up the, the, the medal. Yes. And the, the fact that they managed to shake hand with the, the, the vice chancellor then, sure. it's just. It's a big thing. And yeah. to them, you know, they carry the, the institution's, uh, name by playing football. I mean, that's yeah. their contribution. Right? Yeah. So yeah, that's how I do it. But of Amazing. course, you're going to see me, you know, you don't see me in a, with an entourage. You'll see me playing football or everyone then stopping by, having conversation, asking people, how you Open. doing? Yeah. Approachable. Yes. You know, how are you doing? Are you yeah. healthy? How's yeah. your kids? Where are your wow. kids? Wow. Um, and when, when you don't have the number one doing that, yeah. so when I come in and, and do this, yeah. people are just simply blown away. And one of the things I saw that I do is, if I need to learn from someone, right, if I need to get their opinion, Ooh. I don't summon them to my office. Ooh. I go to their office. Ooh. Ooh. So I think to me, it's natural. It's not something that I, you know, I pretend to do it because I think, you know, if, if I need to learn from you, I'm going to need to borrow your time. I'll go. Absolutely. So you see me in, in, in offices of officers or academics learning from them. And yep. They never had a vice chancellor to, <laughs> in, to, the, in their office, yeah. you know, being there asking, okay, can you please give me the statistics? And wow. So, but again, you can't, you can't make that up. You true, know? true. You know, it's, just, it's just natural to do that, you know. So that is basically some. That's <laughs> a, what happened in the. It's a. It, you're basically in a momentum. Precisely, yes. That was done. Uh, and yeah. one, of, one of the earliest thing that I did here was, I called some of the staff who actually worked in USM for thirty odd years, mm -hmm. but never actually stepped foot in the VC's office, mm. right? Never, never mind yeah. interacting. Yeah. So you know, lunch. You need to eat, right? So I might as well just share that lunch yeah. period with. People and just converse, <laughs> right? How are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know, what, 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 what seems to be sometimes the smallest of problems yeah. get, get discussed and solved over lunch. then, then over yeah. lunch. Yeah. So, might as well just use that time for lunch. It's the Menari guarding <laughs> thing. <laughs> so, I don't approach. No. So, for them, like, you know, 30 years, it's the first time seeing the VC. It's just blue. But we did, we played a prank on them as well. I told my uh, special officer, call them, but don't tell them why I want to see them. So there's a lot of, you know, whenever you do this, people have the impression that I'm, I am dead. And the VC, <laughs> the VC called, you know, I've never been summoned by the VC. Yes. I don't know what I did wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they shared that with their wife. I, you know, I, I might be, you know, I might be fired or whatever. Yeah. So it's fun to see how, how this, this, uh, you know, this, this, uh, Generalization that if the boss wow. comes to you, it's because you made wow. a mistake. This old programming, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, the, yes. The, the headmaster is calling. <laughs> yes. Damn, I should, I should have done something yeah, wrong. Yeah, I've done something right also sometimes. Yeah, so, so that's the thing. So when 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 we had uh, when we say, well, it's actually, I just want to have a conversation, and then mm -hmm. and then we did a five second VC in the sense that we said, why don't you sit on the VC's chair wow. and see how it feels like? Wow. So we did that. And so again, you know, you have, you served the university for thirty odd years under four or five VCs and. For you to come to the office and then sit on that chair to feel okay, what it's like to be a VC. I, it's it's a small effort, but I think the impact big, is huge. Big, big. And people talk about this, and you know, when once people see that it's 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 safe for them to see you to tell you the problems, then uh, half I mean, of the yeah. issues are solved. Yeah. Very true. Very yeah. true. In in my trainings, I live by this. Um, there are, there are a few ways to increase performance. One is uh, they call a. Uh, you, you give them rewards, bonus, this and bonus only lasts until the money lasts, the excitement. Yeah. And then the money finishes, everything right. finishes. Yeah. Second one is what we call uh, recognition. Uh, you are the employee of the year, this is your frame, this and that. It lasts slightly longer. Then the most powerful one is reinforcement, like what you're giving, you know, meeting up with them, having a chat, sitting down. And that goes a long way. I remember one of my friends said his, his uh, former boss gave him a post-it telling that, when he was a junior accountant, 
you are doing an amazing job. And he took that post-it until he became the director of finance. He was still keeping mm. that post-it. Yeah. And it's free. It's free. It's practically free. It's free. It's, you know, there's no, you know, there's, there's no uh, gimmick to it. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the next one, which sure. is performance-based. Sure. Now, servant leadership is one thing. And I also see you are also performance-orientated and you I call as a level five leader. Okay. Um, the lowest level is by position. By position, they say, you thought, say, you know, who am I? Mm. I normally, you know, joke with people. If someone come and ask you, boss material says, who am I? Call 999. <laughs> okay. This guy having amnesia, don't know who is he. Okay. The highest level is what we call pinnacle. Pinnacle is where it runs with respect. So in between are the rest developments and all that. So I see you as a level five leader and there's a lot of respect, you know, because when we came for the pitch and all that stuff, we met some of the, uh, your staffs and all that. How, how happy they are, how excited they are when they were talking about you and all that. Uh, and that's the time, actually, that was the coming to the end of your tenure as a VC. Yeah. And uh, obviously, they were like, what's going to happen? Yeah. That kind of thing. So um, now, um, who ins- uh, now you inspire others right now. The question is, how do you take on performance? What is your take on performance? And how do you notice and take action to retain or release someone? Right. How do you go about this? What do- what are the things you do? Because at your background, you're an engineer. Are you a data person? And how do you measure that? And uh, when it's time to let go, how do you go about letting them go? Yeah. And how do you do that? Yeah, Pro. thank you. So yeah, I mean, um, I uh, you are right in the sense yeah. that I'm, I'm data driven. Mm. But uh, also, when during my interview, I say I'm 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 pragmatic, but I'm not necessarily democratic in mm. the sense that when I say pragmatic in the sense that. Um, you know, Tansi Jaga, our pro-chancellor says, uh, success is height attained relative to potential, mm. right? So height attained relative to potential meaning to say that you have certain expectations based on who you deal with. Mm. So if you deal with academics, for example, right? So you know that academics are, are a privileged bunch. Mm. Why? One, they get fully sponsored to go do a, their PhD abroad. Yeah. And then they enjoy themselves there. You know, yeah. along, you know, along the PhD life, you get to bring your families to you know, the Disneyland or whatever. You know? yep. So you, you had your time. Yep. Uh, and you are the, among, among the highest paid yep. in the university. And the key is that you can be promoted without waiting for other people to retire. This wow. is, you know, that's, that's unique to academic. Okay. So if you have those privilege, obviously the expectation is higher as well. Absolutely. You know? Compared to, let's say, someone who's charged with taking care of landscape. Mm. You know, of course, the expectation is landscape. But, you know, that's, that's, that's his... Spectrum. Yeah. So you treat people differently, yeah. obviously. Um, of course, everything has to be objectively done. You know, um, there's no, mm-hmm. you know, you, you like someone or you don't like someone. That's 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 immaterial. Mm-hmm. So, and then when I took over, you know, level five leadership is mentioned in the book great, Good to Great, yes. right? And then, and uh, some of the uh, things that mention is that you have to face the. Uh, uh, the, the truth, the brutal honesty. You have to be honest brutally. So when I f- join any institution, the first thing I do is look at the situation objectively and see how how bad the situation is mm. or how good it is. Um, and uh, my approach is that when we deal with people, first and foremost, you ask, what can I do to help you with your job? Mm. Right? Or oh, yeah, people will say, I, I'm lacking in this, this, this. We don't have grants. We don't have this and that. Mm-hmm. But if I were to address that for you, mm-hmm. if I fulfill all those, then you have no excuse mm-hmm. anymore. Then if you still don't perform, then I know that it's, it's you with mm-hmm. the problem. It's not the system. It's not the support. And then, of course, I'll, I'll come yep. down. Uh, uh, you know, how I'm, I deal with non-performance, again, it depends on what kind of task you're given. Mm-hmm. If you fail the university, it's all about the university. Mm-hmm. I took pains in explaining that this is for the university, it's not for me. Mm. It's not, you know, if you fail the university, then I represent the university. You know, we have to reprimand people as well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, usually, usually you don't need to do this too often. Once you yeah. do, once you go, you know, once you, you reprimand people fully, make an example of one or two people, then people realize that while I'm ninety five percent friendly, I'm also five percent uh, accountable. Mm. You know, high on accountability. Yeah. 
And this is how far I'm going to go mm. to protect the institution. Yep. It's done. I've proven that it can be done. So don't cross that line. Mm. So, so that's when, when you have that kind of um, arrangement, then, then people will just uh, understand wow. that, you know, he's okay, he's, uh, he's sensible 95% of the time, but do not misuse the trust mm. or the, 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 the sensibility. Do not mm. misuse that. Mm. Especially mm. if you're given a very important job yep. that involves our main stakeholder, which is the students. Absolutely. So if students don't perform, for example, or if there's any issue, if I get people saying that, oh, it's the student's fault, I- I'm not gonna, mm. I'm not going to accept that until you prove to me that you've done everything that you can yep. to rectify the situation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I, absolutely. You, you have a clear cut. Yeah. Okay. Don't cross that line, right? So you, when you were UM and you, when you came to uh, USM, right, Prof? Now, you have your own, USM has its own vision, right? And also it has been driven on that vision either for brand purpose or internal fiber. Yeah. You know, they are talking about comes out from each pore. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a core, it's a core value. Yeah. So like what Simon Sinek talks about is basically you need to start with why, yeah. why you do, how you do and what you do. Yeah. So obviously the, this giant machinery was running on, on whatever program it was running mm. from the previous. Yeah. you know your your successes that you're taking yeah so you as a nature of a person who is very inclusive now you're coming into a place who could have where it could have been run as a very exclusive organization yes. how do you protect that vision as you say the main stakeholders are the students because these are the um, the core people who are actually going to generate yeah. a prosperous malaysia yeah. happier family because each student who graduates are a beacon of hope for every family. Yeah. That's what I think every every university should do that. Yeah. So when you when you came from there and then you have to take the helm of of such an organization, uh, I really don't know how it ran before mm-hmm. and uh, how you were because it's it always runs in the momentum. Yeah. And how long it took for you to come up and you know bring it back to its core and turn it to the momentum. Where it's running now, right. and then now there's another change, and there's another kind of momentum. Yeah. Hopefully, it's yeah. carried on. Yeah. With, with all the result, I saw what you gave from a deficit. You bring it to positive. I'm like, whoa! It's <laughs> yeah. it's good momentum. Yes. yes. Right. So how how do you handle this? How what was the biggest challenge when you came to break that? Because you have to, the flywheel is spinning so fast, yeah. and you have to like you can't stop it. You have to slow it down first and then you start spinning and then you got it spinning. Yeah. So how did you do that? Thank you. Um, so when I first joined, obviously, you have to understand the culture. Uh, these are all ingrained culture and you should look at how things are practiced. But so I, I did last, last lots of questions and I insisted on proof. So one of the things that, for example, some one of the motto is, it says that, um, we are the preferred university by choice mm. or by design. So then you ask the question, how do you, how do you, you know, how do you prove this? Mm. How do you prove that we are sustainable, a sustainable institution? How do you prove that we are giving the best value to students? Mm-hmm. How do you prove that our programs are strong? Mm-hmm. What's the graduate employability? What? And of course, I began conversations that never taken place before. Mm. Things like, we have to look at socioeconomic background, mm. the B40s, mm. B1. You have to look at uh, our, our staff and their children as well, whether they're stunting, malnutrition. And one thing that that is key to my approach is that I put all those questions out there. Mm. Uh, you know, so I write periodically to the campus. I do engagement as well. And if you look at most engagement, they, are, they tend to be somewhat Political in nature, amanat, you know, my hundred days, <laughs> what, what you promised to do. Mine is different. Mine is, okay, this is where we are. Yeah. And this is where I think we should be. But this is the price that we have to pay. Yeah. Is there any, any issues? You know, I, I even went as far as asking people, am I making the right conclusion here? Mm-hmm. Because based on the numbers, do you agree with my conclusion? Because if you agree, then this is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. So, you, you, in a way, you introduce your own set of cultures. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we, uh, 
that was introduced that actually has actually helped in the progress is one, you have to be very transparent. Mm -hmm. You share everything, mm -hmm. finance, uh, graduate employability. These are all bitter, sweet, bitter pill yeah, yeah. Uh, to swallow. But I find it surprising that a lot of people do not know where we were financially. Wow. A lot of people do not know the, where we were research-wise. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of the quality of our program, the graduate employability. So we have to be, you know, we have to be brutally honest, but we have to say, look, we must agree that there is a problem here. Yeah. First, we have to acknowledge that we can do so much better than this, right? And another thing is that I didn't do any strategic uh, workshop or whatever. I didn't do any new slogans. I didn't even change the vision or mission. Wow. We just say, well, let's stick with that. It's fine. I've read all the strategic uh documents mm -hmm. all the minutes of meeting mm -hmm. i think the key is just execution mm -hmm. there's not there's no there's no issue with vision there's no issue with mission mm -hmm. but we've not executed mm -hmm. and so some, one one thing one other thing is you put trust mm -hmm. in your decision making mm -hmm. you have to trust the students you have to trust the mm -hmm. staff we were the first to introduce work from home mm -hmm. which is very important for family and all those things yep. but the first comments that you receive is what if people misuse this? Absolutely. Especially the non-academics, mm. implying that people without academic qualification mm. tend to be the rule breakers, mm. which mm. is not true. Mm. Mm. You're judging people, right? Mm. Mm. But if we say, I say, well, yes, 5% will probably abuse this, whether they are academic or non-academic. Mm. But why let the 5% decide on the 95% who mm. welcome work from home? You know, mm. you, you don't want to be uh, rush to work, you want to handle your kids more, whatever. You put trust on that. So a lot of policies based on trust. Mm. I'll give you an example. Uh, the standard way of issuing black shoes to our support staff is that you get 300 ringgit. Mm -hmm. Either you buy and bring the receipt or you take standard issue shoes mm. which people don't wear because they're mm. not of quality. Mm. So in that sense, you are actually expending resources to find who are submitting false receipts, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And ninety-five percent of the people do not do this, but they're not yeah. going to wear those shoes as well. So that's six hundred ringgit over two years, right? Mm. What we did was we said, we're going to trust you, but you have to also help us. We're going to give you four hundred ringgit mm. for two years. Mm. You go and buy your own shoes. Wow, four hundred ringgit. You can get a good Clark's shoes. Absolutely. And you don't need to replace that for two years, right? It lasts. But you can wear that now because the university is paying for you. Yeah. But we save 200 ringgit. Yeah. Everyone wins. We Amazing. save 200 ringgit. And they are happy to buy their own shoes. Absolutely. They, same goes with safety shoes as well. Yeah. You know the standard issue safety shoes? Yeah, yeah. They don't look good. They don't wear good as well. So we say, you know what? We give the money to you. Just buy. Yeah. We're going to trust you on this. Yeah. 95% people bought safety shoes that work and they like, and then you can see them wearing them. Wow. So these are the things that... that, that very that, practical. Very practical. And I, I say that I'm not going to change USM to become UM. That's, wow. that's one key worry that they have. Because mm -hmm. coming from UM, mm -hmm. they think that I'm going to push this for rankings and mm -hmm. whatnot, mm -hmm. what, which we didn't do. Mm -hmm. We even, In fact, I started off with showing the salary disparity between the sciences and the non-sciences. Mm -hmm. Because the policies favors the sciences. Mm -hmm. You can't say a university is united when some academics earn 7,000, mm. some academics earn 15,000 mm. on average. Mm. So obviously the policy is wrong mm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the biggest experiment we did was, which is probably not written in any management book, mm. in 2019 I said this is a top down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the target, you, 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 you go and, and meet it. It worked. Mm. And then I said to my management, why don't we do the other scale, which is, I'm not going to put any targets. Mm -hmm. You know where the university is. Mm. You guys contribute where you can contribute. Wow. It was a very risky yeah. experiment because, you know, you can go. Yeah. End of the year, we did our calculations, right? Mm. So if you want to improve from 2019, this is what we should get. Mm. Almost all targets were exceeded. Wow. And By the people who you didn't ask them, you must no, do I it just, also. Yeah, you just... Do what you can. Do what you think that is good. You have to have a trade-off. If, mm. if, if you think you cannot publish X number of books, but you're good with student engagement or community engagement mm. or bringing money, you just do more of that in, you know, um, in return for not being able to publish X number of books. Mm. But then if you do that, our institution, USM Progress, 
comprehensively. Mm. That's why we progress. Wow. We progress financially. We progress by this in terms of research. We are number one in community engagement. We are number one in publication. Wow. We are number one in in uh, income. We are number one in quite a number of things. Mm. So international wow. students, wow. postgraduates, yeah, leave people be, they'll do. Wow. So yeah. So <laughs> little sophisticated sure. a bit coming out from the question sure. little bit because there's something exciting here because when you say that you do your best in whatever you can. In, is it because, Prof, that they felt safe suddenly compared to last time? Maybe they didn't feel it is safe to try. Now I feel that it's safe. Suddenly the human mechanism now can become more creative and they feel that I can actually try because I've been given mm. some sort of a room for it. One of the things could be the thing that you were doing all this while also touched in this part of Hey, I feel safe here. It's, it's, it is a process. Yes, true. Yeah. But it's like, you know, if you have a, if you have a cage animal, yeah. right? Or, uh, you rare chicken for eggs, mm-hmm. right? You know, they're always there. Yeah. Things are being dictated. Yeah. When you actually open the gates, it was met with disbelief first. Yeah. It was like, are, are you serious? Yeah. I mean, are you actually doing this? <laughs> right? So, so the first year, people are a bit apprehensive. You know, we can see some people going off, but some are still sticking with, the, the normal ones to which I, I was clear. I would say, look, we give you the empowerment. You guys are not taking, taking this fully. Wow. But we understand that, you know, it takes a while. Wow. But when they see the results, they just, they just, amazing. You know, and then we share the, those, uh, those numbers as well with wow. people. So yeah. That's <laughs> exciting how you, uh, you know, with what we're talking about being human, right? Yeah. How you touch that powerful part of, yes. you know, that, that entity that we already have, which is forgotten because of, you know, whatever that has happened. And you get people to flourish out of this. So uh, you also mentioned in your article, this is in line with what you're saying, we never strategize for ranking as we understood that if we are excellent, then performance in this ranking will be a natural outcome. This is something we, uh, in the beginning when we're having a chat, like uh, who your role model and all that, you said that basically, you know, this is something that you're doing and all these things are basically the side effect that started coming. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting article that was written by Buckminster Fuller. Yeah. Uh, it's an amazing guy. Mm-hmm. He wrote about law of precession. Mm-hmm. When you keep going this way, it'll always create ripple. Yeah. And uh, the best way to go down is keep adding value. Yeah. And all the ripple that will come will be just amazing. Yeah. Now, if yeah. you start chasing after the ripple, okay, now I'm making money. Let me go after the money <laughs> now. Yeah. Then that becomes this and other problem will start coming exactly. and yeah. then yeah. you go in a circle. Yeah. So I'm super excited with what you were saying and I know your why factor. We had a chat about that. So my next question, Prof, is this. What will that one thing that can be done in education that by doing it that everything else will be unnecessary to be done? One thing I'm going to ask. What's that one thing you feel that if we can do in, 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 in our country's education, everything else will start doing well? What would that be? I think, um, you know, you need to basically put trust and you know the intent must be clear mm. which is about nation building mm. that's it you put yourself you put the 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 uh, the task in front of you you know it's, mm. it's nation building first nation it's building. people it's people first um, rather than any other uh, intent so mm. it has to start with intent you start with why mm-hmm. right mm. Uh, as you mentioned just now, so the why is important. Why is why why are we doing this? Is for nation building, and it transcends all everything. It transcends race, religion, uh, socio-economic background, everything. So, and I think when you see nation building, you cannot run away from sacrifice. Mm. So, if there's a word that is easier to remember, is sacrifice. Mm. Mm. We must live. You know, I think you find meaning when you sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice your own. Um, well-being for the benefit of, mm. you know, for the benefit of lots of people. Mm. You satisfy your comfortable and your comfort for the benefit of people. Mm. You know, you don't you don't go for happiness. You go for meaning. Right? Mm, mm, mm. So we need people to sacrifice, and sacrifice mm. is a is a huge word. And I think um, we grow up reading narratives about people sacrificing yep. themselves for larger good. You know, yeah. You read war stories. You read about you know politicians. Uh, sincere petition who yeah. some of them were, were murdered anyways you know yeah. they paid yeah. the ultimate price yeah 
I think that's what is needed. You yeah. know, if, if that can be done, it's, it's part of the system, then I think wow. we'll be fine. Wow. We'll be fine. You wow. know? Amazing. So we get someone who really believes in this, sacrifice for that cause of nation building. That's right. Yeah. And put all the policies properly. Yes. Yeah. It's just amazing. I have this, again, Kloa Taju a little bit, but it's also connected with what we're talking about. Now, we all had teachers in our those days, right? And the teachers basically really came there to teach. Yep. They had the time to teach and they were fierce teachers. That's right. Right? They throw dust at you also still like your chalk sure. flies. Yeah, and, yeah. But they are amazing teachers. They thought right. until today, mm. we remember. Yeah. And then, then came along a thing called system. Yeah. Slowly, teachers who were teachers who were doing the main thing of teaching started becoming more of an administrator. Yeah. They started doing more of administrative work because of the name called CRM. Yeah. They have to put so many things inside. All of us have that many hours only. Yeah. And their teaching hours have reduced. So now, is that one of the biggest cha- challenge we are facing also, Prof, in, in, in going? Where's the balance in technology and doing the real important thing that we're supposed to do? Because in Singapore, and I think in Finland, the teachers are paid very high. Yeah. And they actually teach. So how do we find a balance in this? So is it the quality of the people are like that? Or I, I, I'm a bit puzzled in that. Um, so in my article I wrote, there's a Nobel Prize winner that says, uh, you do not compromise your values, mm. but you have to be pragmatic with mm. external evaluations. Yep. Now I think if you look at it, I think we, we're trying to be we're trying to qualify with all these clubs mm-hmm. when it comes to education. Oh, let's do, let's go with PISA, let's go with the Fin, let's qualify for these rankings and that rankings. And if, if we get number 11 or whatever, mm. then politicians go, ah, oh, it's not working, uh. right? Um, and so again, this, 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 this trying to qualify for external evaluation is making the whole thing very, uh, regulated. Mm-hmm. And also very narrow-minded. Mm-hmm. Education cannot be forced onto people. One, and as nations, we should know what we want to educate Absolutely. our future generations ooh, ooh. with. And the third is this one size fits all. Ooh. So I think again, it's, it's it's lazy if we say this is the only way of educating people, ooh. and this is applicable to the urbanites and people who are not ooh. urban. So in USM, for example, we have. A number of promotion track for our academics. Mm-hmm. We probably have the largest mm-hmm. research, teaching, leadership, clinical, performing mm-hmm. arts, mm-hmm. humanities. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they are all academics, but performing arts cannot do publication, mm-hmm. right? And again, what we're trying to do with our students as well is that we want to make sure that for every course, we have a, a, a way of assessing them. It's not a one size fits all. Mm-hmm. I think the same goes with education as well. Absolutely. I mean, if you want those kind of teachers to flourish, mm-hmm. you cannot put a, you know, you cannot put a, a make-believe format for them to follow when mm. that format is based on different cultures or mm. different backgrounds as well. Yep. You know, you, so nowadays, you, do, you don't find any more uh, strict teachers. Mm. But I think there's, there's room for strictness when it calls for it, mm. right? So everyone has the same expectation that yeah. teachers have to bend over backwards, students, you cannot raise your voice, you cannot discipline people as the parents. Strict the parents. And, yeah, the parents will come chasing after. Mm. And, you know, this, again, with, with, with social media, with WhatsApp group, I find it very sad that um, teachers or school are questioned to the point where they are afraid to do anything new mm. whatsoever, mm. you know, because parents have to have their say. Mm. So I'm from an academic background. Mm. But when I send my kids to the school, I say, well, they're going to stay there for hours. Mm. There's a transference of trust here. Mm. I'm going to let the teachers do yep. what they think is right. Yep. I might not be happy with the system, but I know that they are bounded by a system as well. System thought of by some experts who might not be uh, on the ground, who yep. will probably just cast a, a big net to cover everyone. Yep. And of course, there's no room for failures as well, the way we do things. I remember when I was the, um, the, uh, the, the, the PIBG, uh, and the Pertur PIBG, and I saw what they did in UK schools. We don't only really have uh, awards for the top 10 students. We also have awards for the top 10 most improved students, mm. right? 
And the parents who attend this are different from those who are most improved. In fact, the most improved parents never had a chance to see their kids oh, on stage. Wow. This, the, that was the first time they were invited by the school. And these are, you know, these are going from C to B plus. Fine, you know what? Let's celebrate that, you know, <laughs> for the price of a, of a certificate. Right. You know, you even know they will go to an interview for a boarding school and suddenly the interview says, oh, you want this? And they can tell a story of how they improve. Yeah. And with that certificate, they will stay there. You know, they go from B plus to A minus. They get, you know, 5% improvement every time. Wow. That's not it, right? That's not it in, in the system we have now. It's like either you follow this more or you're out of the system. Yeah. But these people might be talented, you know. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's this lazy Because class. this done, the school actually did this? Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. So, we, we, we did that. And, uh, you know, I was there. I was looking at the parents mainly. I mean, the kids, they never had this chance to go. And they're not good in sports. They're not good in academics. You know, what... What hope do you, and then so we want to tell the parents, look, you have to, you have to be, be kind to your, to your, to your kids, right? So we say, well, let's take, I think we did, we took 15, you know, the more the merrier. And just take whoever that used to fail and now suddenly they become, you know, they managed to pass at D or whatever. Let's, let's, let's give that, right? Um, and it's amazing to see the, the, the joy in the parents. At least they have something to celebrate about the children, yeah. right? Wow. So, <laughs> you know, in the university, what I did was, uh, I actually, as VC, I signed individual cards wishing all those people who get 2.0 and below or close <laughs> as a good luck to wow. you. Wow. You know, go, go for it, right? So imagine a, a student getting a, a, a good oh, luck VC. from, but it's tiring, man, because you know, like 10,000 <laughs> plus of them, but you, and you, you insist on, on signing that. The funny thing is that the good ones yeah. saw this and they say, how come I didn't get a card from the VC? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that, right? So, <laughs> so I, can, you know, I, I want a card from the VC as well. Oh. But the thing is, it's not a school, but I think you try to do as much as you can, mm. right? Um, and, you know, I think if you regulate all things and, you know, and people are very sinistic about how things are, they don't give teachers a chance. Some teachers need, need time to mature. They're young. But if they go under heavy criticism in media, social media, media, you know, social media and all those things, people will not be creative and wow. they will not make a decision. This single initiative alone, Prof, you know, this celebrating the unsung heroes kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. I, I hope, you know, you'll have some time to really go and echo this, amplify it. Because coming from someone for your stage and what you have done, I think education ministry needs to understand this. Because... There are a lot of kids who are good in their own way. Yeah. And uh, if we are allowed to give them as parents some room for them to grow and teach us an environment to, to be celebrated, they will, some of them will start crossing. Precisely. And then they'll say, I have hope and I'll be able, I'll give a personal story. Um, Kavita, you know, you know, she studied in yeah. USM. She's a double gold medalist. Yep. And, uh, yeah. And uh, it's, it's just amazing. And uh, when she first started, we have, I have three kids, Krishna, Kavita and Kavina. They're all gold medalists. Now, when it first started, I, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm, I'm a scorekeeper. I keep scores. Yeah. Number one, number two, number three. That's it. <laughs> Otherwise, so so Kavita was, uh, Kavi, Krishna and Kavina were getting like number one, number two, no problem. Kavita was getting number 43. And <laughs> okay. Kavita and Kavina are identical twins. Right, right. So I'm like talking to these girls. Hey. Both of you look the same, hair, all shape, everything same. The brain should be the same also, right? <laughs> How come you're 43 with this? Now, I didn't understand about positive mindset and all that until we started using law of attraction. Yeah. And then my wife and I, we said this, we're going to be celebrating parents. So what we did, we called the family, we said, if you get one, two, three, get present. If you, if you don't get that, if you, if you're improving from wherever you are to any notch forward, if you're not one, two, three, no present, but you still get high five and a hug. Now, for Kavita's case, this is the journey. Mm. From 43, she moved to 19, high five and a hug. And then she moved to number 12, high five and a hug. And then this is what she said. I like this. Can we continue? Mm. And then next, it went to number five, number three, number two, because the other twin was number one. They were hovering around three, two, five, yeah. around Fantastic. there. Yeah. And the beauty about this, prior to that, Kavita used to run away from me. When I come, it was just like, uh, you know, our yeah. MH370 that lost in radar. Yeah. So same thing. Cannot find Kavita. She's hiding somewhere. 
our relationship started going yeah. apart. Yeah. Now, after celebrating all this, now you know where she, she's double yeah. gold medalist. Yeah. I'm super proud of all the kids. And I'm meeting someone, thank you so much, <laughs> who can actually bring this message to yeah. a larger people. And, you know, tell the schools, hey, celebrate these people also. Yeah. I've done that in this school. And they're happy. Can we have it like a ritual kind of thing? And I think that's one of the things will rising tide will rise all ships. Let's now. hope so. Let's hope you so. You know, I, 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 I'm super excited with what you just said. One of the things also that I share with school is that you have to look at your trajectory as well. Mm. So if, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm from a, from a, from a poor family. Mm. I'm the first to, to enter a boarding school. That shows a large trajectory. If you mm. come from Felda or whatever and mm. you come to a high, flying boarding school, you are already a success because yeah. you have to follow that yeah. trajectory compared to my kids, for example, you know, they get whatever they want, you yeah. know, you want a laptop, fine, you want yeah. to go home tuition. True. So your trajectory to enter this boarding school, well, you're also a success, yeah. but you follow a, a small trajectory compared yeah. to this person. Yeah. So as they face exam, I say, look, you have to not, so if you don't get number one, number two, three, the T20s get number one, two, two, it's, uh. It is expected of them, yeah. but you cannot be too hard on yourself yeah. because you've already gone a long way. Yeah. You've already landed in this uh, prestigious school. Yeah. You are there. Yeah. The same goes with when people hit the job market, right? Yeah. So if you have, if you get number one even, but you come from poor family, you're not going to get your first deposit for your car. You're going to drive yeah. us an old car, just like myself, a second, yeah. second-hand car. You have to be kind to yourself to say, oh, you know what, because I didn't get a... Uh, um, a head start, whereas you know some of your friends will get number thirty, for example, but they have parents who can pay for the car. Exactly, they're going to start driving that. that yeah. That's not a measure of success in that yeah. sense. You have to have, you have to look at things in perspective. Yeah. And be kind to yourself. Your day will come. Mm. So these are things that I tell teenagers as well. Look, wow. you know, you are work in progress. Everyone yeah. has your own trajectory. Yeah. If you did well, good. If not, then it's just a setback. Wow. Bounce and there. Are, if it's about exams, you're yeah. going to take exams the rest of your life. Yeah. So you can have, you know, you can atone for your yeah. mistakes or whatever. Yeah. So hopefully they calm people, the young people down a bit, you know, Absolutely. less stressful. and Don't yeah. keep comparing. No. no. The biggest social yeah. problem is co compari well, comparison. You can compare, but with perspective as well. You yes. need to know, you know, where you are and where you start Absolutely. off from. So it's not a, a level playing field kind of a thing. Exactly. So it's pretty much the thing we, we say with, to, to, to the students here. Yeah. We acknowledge that you are a B40, but we don't want people to be entitled. You cannot use that B40 to say, ah, because I'm B40, I need help. No. You have to work for it, but we know you have some issues. We're going to help you, nudge you, but don't use that as an excuse not to mm. try anything. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wow. balance. Yeah. So it's a constant conversation. We it, need is. To, you know, yes, it is. It motivation, is. like yeah. what you said. Yeah. It's awesome. So in a, you have kids and uh, you have three Four. Four. And, and uh, you are close with them, I'm sure, with all this stuff. And, and you are still able to, you know, have this conversation with them. So the question is, what would the one thing a parent should do? By doing it, everything else would be unnecessary to do. Because I think it's important, because parents will be watching this also, yeah. to know how do I, you know, I'm busy. How do I handle my kids, my family? What would your advice be? Uh, you have to... You have to choose the harder truth and not the easier wrong. Okay. In the sense that you have to spend time with them. And mm. this is, this is spend time with them and they call the shots. They, they dictate the, the topic of conversation. Mm. If you have teenage kids, mm. they need to go out, for example. You have, have a, you know, so have, uh, you know, so have, have one day out with your teenage teenage uh, daughter and she calls the shot where to eat, what to buy. She becomes the boss and you just tag along. You, know, you, you try not to impose your thinking, let mm. them think for themselves and mm. then you know you find a middle ground. Mm. I think that's that's you know you, you don't go for you don't go for feel good factor where you go out, but then you know you guys are not paying attention to each other. Mm. You're still on your phone. And then and these sort of things do not take you cannot justify that you are too busy to the point where you can't spend at least a quality one hour with your yeah. with your yeah. with your child. That's amazing. Yeah. So I, I long ago I read somewhere um, what the kids want is undivided attention. Yeah. Not eight hours. No <laughs> kids want to be with yeah. the parents for no. eight hours. No. No spouse want to be together for eight hours <laughs> yes, sitting yes. down looking at yes, each other. Yes. 
So I think one of the key thing is you know when you are with them you really pay attention do, to them. You do. You do. Yeah, like you I to. remember when a casual conversation when you took a drive to yeah. go to the university yeah. you actually everything aside you were actually having that wonderful conversation. Yes. And that is undivided attention although you were driving yeah. but you were connected. Precisely. Not you know a lot of parents what they do they watch TV and talk. Yeah. They are with their phone. Yeah. They talk, and then they consider that I've actually had a conversation. Yeah, I think that is something we should move away from. Yeah, and uh, exactly like what you said, talk to them and get yeah. engaged with them. Precisely, and uh, I'm sure you have very good relationship with them. There's mutual respect. I do, and they yeah. understand that that's you're busy also. Yeah. Now, my 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 last question pertaining to this because this is a big thing. Where how do how do families need to coexist with technology? Because especially after the pandemic started, whether we like it or not, the technology has come and infiltrated in the life, whether we like it or not. Those who have, you know, B forty to T twenty, everybody have a device now because they have to study at that time. Yeah. So how what would be your advice be in coexisting with technology, Prof? Because yeah. it can either it can go. Technology is not bad. Yeah. It is a double edged sword. Only that it all depends on the user. Yes. What would you advise me? Because you deal with a lot of students. Well, I think we have to know our limits yeah. and do not abuse that. So again, when I talk to my kids and also to school kids, I said, "Well, do not misuse your talent mm-hmm. and 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 your academic capability to to humiliate people. Mm. Now you don't seek attention." At someone else's cost, mm. at the cost of someone, mm. you you mock people or you degrade people online, those kind of things. Mm. But you still have to have limits, mm. and you know, um, so far the family do not have any game console. Mm. There's no mm. PS3. There's no nothing. Wow. Uh, and then we we have a, a, a rule that says during uh, uh, school days, no 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 gadget. My my kids, my seven year old and ten year old, do not have. Uh, any phone or whatever, you know. Wow. So with all my children started having their 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 gadget when they are thirteen. Um, wow! And again, I I we just I just make sure that they they follow certain rules, which is one again, you do not misuse this. Do not de- degrade people. Have respect. You know people are, have their own history and they they are people of age, but we limit the usage as well. Mm. There are days, there are times when no one is allowed mm. to use. You can play chess. You can, uh, you know, play with whatever. But no gadgets. Uh, to prove that we can live without those gadgets. Wow. Right? So, uh, and uh, so it seems to work. It Amazing. Seems, it seems to work. I, I like that advice. It's again, it comes to the parenting. That's right. Yes. Because I always tell the parents, you know, they come, you know, we have youth program and all that. They say, I can't get my kid out of this phone. It's so addicted. <laughs> so I normally lean close to them and say. You should actually give a tight slap to the person who gave it to them. <laughs> then they, yes. they pause for a while and say, "I did it." Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But now I stop telling that because it's it is a must now. But I, sometimes I see, you know, everybody sits together, even a small child with a phone. Everyone around the table yeah, using the yeah. phone, and there's no engagement. No. So it's a brilliant advice. I'm, I'm so, I think yeah. it's good that you mentioned parents as well because I think as parents we have to be exemplary. Yeah. So pe- no kids need to. You cannot have. Double standard. When yeah. you say you know you can't use gadget or whatever, yeah. and then you end up, mm. you know, being glued or playing games or whatever, you somehow have to also make that sacrifice again. Mm. So you want the kids to 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 have off time. You also have to have wow. that. You know, pick up a book. Yeah. Read read something. You know, yeah. or, or or do something else. But yeah. put that phone aside. Amazing. So, yeah. Getting organic again. It says being human again. Well, Connecting. I'm, I've been without a phone for a year before. It's an a social experiment that I did on myself. One year, and One year. were you working? I was the deputy vice chancellor then. Seriously, <laughs> and how did they call you? <laughs> through my PA or through the old days, you know, emails or leave a message. I get back to you. How did you? Did I've, you feel peaceful? I find no phone, no WhatsApp, nothing. Nothing. There's no okay. phone. Nothing. Okay. It's you know, you can't get me. I said, as a social experiment. It's just like how you you went to your ten days. <laughs> yeah. This is that you know you suddenly you yeah, you, f- yeah, yeah. you feel free. Yeah. You're not bounded by this urgency to address things. Of course, it makes people upset. You know, my boss tend to be upset at times when they need to be uh, contacted urgently. 
but I live for one year unscathed. Wow. I'm still quite productive. And eventually people just accept the fact that you know, Rafiq did not have a mobile phone yes. for one year. They adapted. They adapted. They, they mapped to your... <laughs> that's right. They mapped to your lifestyle. Wow. It's fine. That's amazing. Hats off to you. <laughs> I was like in 10 days, I was like, wow. But you're right. You're right. It, it, things actually, when, after 10 days, when I came back, things were much better actually. <laughs> super, I mean, super excited. I mean, if you think about it, you, yeah. you reach for your phone for what? Some news? You no, know, social, yeah, exactly. Facebook, and half the time, you just scroll for endlessly for what? Exactly. <laughs> So, Sometimes it's just habitual, right? The phone will be there, you're yeah. like... Yeah. So if you think about it, I, I know I, I play uh, fantasy football, for example, uh -huh. where, you know, you watch football and you get points. Uh -huh. When you look at it, at, at, the, at, the, at the raw level, as a human being, you don't need that. Yeah, true. You really don't need that kind of entertainment. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. So, but you just... We just put our, on ourselves to just, you know, I need to do this. You don't need, you want to do it. You want to do it. Eventually, it becomes overwhelming and habitual. Yeah, so, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Prof, I'm super excited having this conversation thank you, with thank you. Thank you for having So, uh, I picked up a lot of stuff, you know, I asked whatever I wanted to ask and also asked a few more questions which was pertaining for that. Now, Prof, in order, uh, you know, um, in order for people to find you, where could they find you, you know, because normally we leave a link at the bottom, you know, mm -hmm. to get in touch with you because you also uh, give motivational talks and all that. Yeah. And, and how, how could people find you? you can, um, yeah. So we would leave the link later. Yeah. So um, uh, one advice for the audience, if you want to say, what would that advice be in making them a better version of themselves or their family? What would that be? Okay. Prof. Well, they can find me. They can email me. Okay. Uh, uh, and you know, you can. You know, we, we will put it down yeah, there. But what what would that be? It's Rafik at USM. Not my. Not my. So yeah, just email me. Yeah, I'll get back Amazing. to them. Amazing. One thing I love about communicating with you, you are very prompt, and I think one of the factors is you really respect time. Yeah. And and you do that, and I you know we'll leave all the link. You know, if there's someone wants sure, to reach out sure. and get some info, we'll leave it there. So what would your advice be? To, to, to the people at large, you know, uh, on, on being a better version of themselves and also for their family, what would that be? I, I, I just like to, you know, when I go around and talk to people, I just, um, one of the things that I, I tell people is that you must have a high sense of acknowledgement. So every day when we wake up, when we, when we, wake up, we are given an opportunity to help mm. someone. First, we have to acknowledge the fact that those opportunities are there mm. because then you become a vessel of goodness. Mm. If you continue to aspire to become a vessel where goodness is transferred to someone mm. through your help, you have to acknowledge the fact that, that God is being kind towards you mm. and that will return. So if you acknowledge the fact that if you wake up every day and you say, well, today I'm going to forget about my problems, because I will have opportunities to help others, which will help in one way to solve my problems. And it will actually come back in a lot of positive to you or your family. Wow. The concept of blessedness. Wow. Then, um, then you, you know, you, 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 you feel, you feel, you will feel, you find meaning in, wow. in your life. Wow. And I, at the end of the day, you know, what, what else can you leave behind other than you, you know, your, the people that you touch, the, the people that you assisted and you feel you see progress wow so that's that's fantastic that's thank that's you so <laughs> much prof thank no you worries. so much yeah. had thank a wonderful session sure. with you sure. and all the information will be will be putting it in uh, in uh, the description at the bottom sure. and uh, today i'm super blessed to be in the space of as i said in the beginning awesome human being and you know the what we discussed about in between the two braid layers you found all the feeling just now and um, do keep in touch, do reach out to uh, Prof Rafiq if you want to get any information. You know, he's right here at USM and you know deep inside what is his why. It's all about, you know, building the nation. It's about, you know, students. It's about making them to be a better version of themselves. So if you want to get some information, do reach out. And uh, thank you so much, Prof, you know, for giving your wonderful time and uh, allowing us to come to this amazing place which you created, actually. <laughs> it was your brain child and uh, first time i came i got super excited and uh, we said if we are driving up we are driving up i'm there going to learn four hours plus we'll just go because i just want to be in this 
space and immerse myself into that. So thank you very much for creating the space. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you thank so you. much. And all the best for being human. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. I hope that you have enjoyed our powerful talk with Prof. Rafiq and Mr. Siva. Do give it a big thumbs up and share this video to all your friends. Do hit the subscribe button and also a big shout out to Minden11 for giving us the powerful space and the podcast room. And we really, really are thankful for an amazing space. If you guys are in Penang, USM, do feel free to visit M11 right next to CIMB. And with that, do stay tuned for more videos on our website, Being Human. Take care. Bye-bye.